Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel Easy Sewing with Tyke. Here is the concluding part of the last tutorial video on my channel. If you missed it, the link to that video will be showing on your screen right now and also at the end of this video. So do it to check it out so you can understand where we are coming from. Now to my returning subscribers and viewers, thank you for always coming back. Thank you for always engaging on my videos. I appreciate you all so, so much. If today is the first time of coming across this channel of hearing my voice, my name is Tyro and you're welcome. It's great to have you here. Be sure to watch till the end. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and share. You can leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. Now let's get started. Placing the lining on the right side of the back bodies, I would go ahead and sew it together at the sides in order to turn these back bodies with the lining. I will not be sewing it yet at the neck area because remember I will be adding the collar. So there's no point turning that neck area with lining. So I will just be sewing it off at the sides and I'll be turning it over. So I've done that now. And the next thing I'll be doing is to sew it, to sew off the dart. Because I have notched it, it made it easier to locate where I'm to fold for the dart. So I just had to measure the dart height and I sewed it off. And this is what I have. The back is ready. I'll set it aside and move over to the front. At the front now, before I start um, turning this front neckline with lining and the waist, I have to notch where I want my collar to stop. So I want it to stop at a length of 3 inches. But remember, I have half inch allowance joining at the shoulder that way which is why i marked out three and a half then i would go ahead and attach the belt onto the side you know i said this the length of this place is determined by the width of the belt because i want to sandwich this belt in between the main fabric and the lining to achieve a neat finish so i'll just be stitching it down and remember to come up by half inch the half thing that we need to join these upper bodies to the lower part. Don't make the mistake of sewing the belt directly from the lower part. Okay. With the belt secured, now I can start turning the front upper bodies with the lining. Remember that I'm going to start my sewing from the three and a half inches that I marked for the collar. So I'll be sewing it all the way at the front neckline like this then i'll proceed to sew it off at the side the side where i have the belt and the other side of the upper bodies after which i'll proceed to turn it out and this is what i have so you want to notch that three and a half inches mark all the way but do not go through your sewing okay so that by the time you turn it out you want to have something like this after which i would go ahead and top stitch on the lining in order to achieve a flat look and the next thing to do now is to sew off the darts for the front upper bodies since i have notched it it made it easier just like i did for the back and this is what i have so far the next thing i'll be doing now is to place the front and the back together and join the two at the shoulder like this it's time to join the two together at the side so at one side i'll be sewing it off completely from the bust all the way to the waistline but on the second side i'll be stopping two inches before the m line to create a space for the belt to pass through okay which is why i uh, marked it off this way i've gone ahead to sew it now and you can see that i have that space there with this space the belt can conveniently pass through the side with ease so if your belt is one and a half inch you want to leave a space of two inches for ease so that the belt will pass in through conveniently and you can have something like this so the reason why i chose this side to have the space is because i know that this wrap part will always be at the top since this dress has only one part that is curved so that is the side that i would always put at the front so you want to take note of that before choosing the side that would have the space for the belt to pass through or you can 
put this piece at the two sides it works as well then you can go ahead and use an m gum to flatten it out this way because you need it to flatten out so it can be easy for the belt to go in and out this is me sewing off the second side completely after imputing the bust at the waisting measurement and this is what i have so far i am back on the cutting table to cut the collar because we have joined the front and the back together and to cut the collar you need to measure the next circumference so starting from the front i went ahead to measure it from one end to the other end and i have 14 inches in total so i have my fabric i folded it into four and i'll go ahead and measure out seven inches remember this fabric is on fold so when it is opened i have 14 inches that i mentioned and the height of this color i'm working with three and a half you can work with four inches also if you want it wide but i'm working with three and a half so at the folded part that we are go ahead and measure out one inch for that color extension for that color design and i'm going to slant it all the way to the pl place that is not on fold that is the side that will be attached to the neckline so we are going to have something like this and i would proceed to add half inch allowance to the side for joining then i'm going to cut it all out now it's time to reduce the center back remember i told you while cutting that this half length at the center back is usually shorter than what we have at the center front so the difference between the half length at the center back and at the center front is 1.5 inch so i'll go ahead and measure that at the center back and slant it towards the side then i will just go ahead and cut it off so this is it when we are done attaching the lower part it is going to straighten out so it's not going to curve that way if you don't do this you might experience some bulge or some other things at the center back which will not allow the overall outlook of the dress to be nice here is the 180 degree flare that will cut out earlier i've gone ahead to attach all the flounce to it so if you look at the upper part that way which is the part we are attaching to the waistline i did not start attaching the flounce from that upper part i came down by half inch because i'm still going to attach this 180 degree flare to the wrap dress to the upper part another thing to note is that for the flounce if you are able to cut out 360 degree for everything and you have different flare like i did you have to attach the 360 degree flare to this curved part okay because it is more wavy it is nicer it won't be nice if this 360 degree flare that you're able to cut out if it's just one or two falls to the back so it is better it falls to the front this curved part because this curved part is the place that is going to be at the upper part okay so you just want to take note of that but if you are able to cut your 360 degree flare for everything then you do not need this part and also if you are able to cut for example 180 degree flare or 90 degree flare and fortunately you have it in excess you can gather it like i did to make it more wavy okay so like i said when we we're calculating the circumference for the m line i did not attach the flounce all the way to the other side because this side that i am i'm touching with my scissors is going to, to fall under so even having it all the way there would just be like a waste of fabric because it is going to be underneath okay and then i will not even achieve that on even m line that is in this style that we are recreating so that is why you have to stop it like 10 or 15 inches before you get to the other side like i did here if you have watched up to this point and you're yet to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up kindly do so so that you will not forget all right thank you moving on 
when i get back to the sewing machine i will just go ahead and place the center of the 180 degree flare and match it up with the center of the upper part like so, and just go ahead and sew it from one end to the other end but before that let's sew the collar attach it and attach the sleeve here's the collar i am going to be interfacing it with a soft stay i'm meant to iron this day on it before i start sewing but i just do not want to get up right now you can also interface with any other interfacing of choice but i'm making do with soft stay so i'm going to sew it at the two sides using the half inch that we added for sewing afterwards i trim off the excess interfacing then i reduce the center of the collar this way by going up by half an inch this is just to make the collar lay more on uh, lay properly remember when we are cutting out our shirt collar we usually do this okay so that's all i am doing and i'm going to notch the center for easy fixing after which i will turn it inside out give it a good press then match up the center of the collar with the center of the neckline and just sew it all the way from one end to the other end note you can decide to just attach one side of the collar and the other side you fold it on top of where you have sewn to achieve a neat look like we would have done if it was a shirt collar but i chose to fix the collar this way i would go ahead and weave it when i'm done Moving on to the sleeve, I just went ahead to fold it at the end using one inch. Then I match up the center of the sleeve with the shoulder line and I fix the sleeve again from one end to the other end till I have covered all the armhole with the sleeve. Then I sewed it off at the sides and this is what I have so far. The upper part is ready. Now it's time to attach the lower part. Here I was done attaching the upper part to the lower part. I had a little excess for the flare and I use it to make a box plate at the center back like this. For adventure you are wondering what to do to that extra 15 inches that you are not attaching the flounce to. You can just fold the aim like this and that will be all for today now did you gain value did you learn something new did you enjoy the tutorial if the answer to all of this is yes then kindly let me know in the comment below hit the like button also share okay you don't want to enjoy all of this alone and subscribe if you are yet to you can also follow me on other social media platforms it's easy sewing with tyke till i see you in my next tutorial bye